Okay, so we're gonna talk about um, time complexity, um, especially in loops, right? So let's, I'm gonna be taking like Java-ish code here, kind of, that kind of makes sense. Um, it's easier to, to see and understand probably. So the first one is the real basic one. I is one less than equal to n, i plus plus, and then a bunch of statements happen here. Um, we know for this one, it just goes from one to n so the order of this is n right this was this is pretty basic um let's just move on to some interesting ones so instead of incrementing the value of i by one if we increase it by two then let's see what what happens and a bunch of statements happen in, inside there um so what what we've got to focus on is just what's going on with i here or whatever variable is here um, so what happens to I it starts at 1 right and then every iteration what's happening is it's 2 is being added to it right so 2 plus 2 plus 2 and then let's just say like I know we know like it's got to stop at n but let's just say we are gonna try and try and find the condition of when that happens so let's just say just it iterates k times so this happens, let's say k times. Okay, so if we ignore that portion one here, because that's not gonna make much of a difference, right? When it becomes um, large. Um, so the summation here becomes two times k. That's gonna be the sum of this these portions, right? We can add a one, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, let's just say the one is there. Um, and then now we gotta see when this conditions gonna become false and the loop's gonna stop. So when's that gonna happen? Well, when it i becomes n, right after that it's gonna stop, the loop's gonna stop. So that's how many times it's gonna run. So that condition when it's gonna stop is gonna be when i becomes n, right? So these are essentially equal. That That is when it's gonna stop. And we gotta find the value of k um, to see when it actually happens, right? So let's just, single out k here it becomes n minus 1 by 2 so that's that's essentially the order um, so order minus 1 by 2 now we know that 1 by 2 is a constant so it can be ignored n minus 1 minus 1 is again a constant so it can be ignored as well so it happens n times but the order of this is essentially n Okay, and then let's just take next example. Like, doesn't it's kind of subjective? So, like, for example, if we take i is equals to n over two, and then is greater than or equal to one, and then let's just go i minus one. So, like, even for this one, what's going to happen is it's just going to go from n over two to one. So we just know that over to doesn't really mean anything so it's just order of n so like it's subjective it's it's it changes depending on from where the loop is running from and how many times it's running so we just got to check that every time to make sure what's going on so let's take a different example now let's just go i is equals to one i is less than equal to n or actually less than n and then i is getting multiplied by two every time this time. Okay, so what happens here? Um, so again, we just gotta check what's happening with i. So i initially is one, and then it's just getting multiplied by two every iteration. And let's just say that happens k times, right? So um, what's gonna become of it? Or what's that gonna come to? That's gonna become two to the power k, right? Um, and that's when we're assuming the uh, loop's gonna stop but actually when it's a loop gonna stop so when i is equal to n that's when the loop's gonna stop so let's just say this is equal to n now we take log base 2 on both the sides and then using the log property we know this becomes 2 over 2 because this k can come here and that's a k very badly written one but Okay, so log base two, and another log property, this is one. 
So k becomes log n base 2 and that's the order for this loop. Now um, if this here was getting multiplied by 3 the only difference we would see is instead of 2 to the power k it would be 3 to the power k which would be equal to n and then we would have log n base 3 that's going to be the only difference like um, if this is multiplied by k as we saw here so it becomes like that's going to become the base whatever i is being multiplied by that's going to become um, the base but it's always going to be log n um, and then let's just look at a different example now And let's take a different one now. Let's take that one. So what's happening here is I initially, I is, well, if you're comfortable doing it like in the reverse order, that's fine too, because this is exactly equal to, let me take that off. Like it would do the same thing if I if I reversed it. If I if I is one, and I is greater than n, I is equals to I. But I think this is gonna do the exact same thing as um, this one because this is gonna operate n minus one times, and that's gonna operate also n minus one times. So yeah, like you could do either. Like if anything makes your life easier, go for it. Uh, let's just take this one here. So I is initially n. What's happening, Leah? These ones, I'm, I'm just going to look at i's, right? So initially it's n, and what's happening is it's getting divided by 2 every time. So it's divided by 2, 
next iteration the whole thing start by two and next iteration the whole thing start by two essentially what's happening is n is getting divided by two let's say for k times and when this is when the loop stopping and when we see the actual condition here is i is greater than one uh, which means when i becomes one it's going to stop so let's just equate that to one so n is equals to 2 raised to the power k take log on both sides base is n we should have not yeah so this becomes the order for this loop here so basically the order is about base n so just one thing to notice um is whenever is i getting halved or i is getting doubled the order is always log n so i guess just you can remember this as a rule that whenever i is getting halved or doubled the um the order is n now actually just let's move to the nested loops now i think again we might already know that if it's a basic nested loop then it becomes like it, um, the order is n squared but why is it n squared that's what we're gonna see here okay so here's i and here's j so when i is 1 j goes from 1 to n essentially it, it runs n times right oopsie yeah so when i is 1 j runs from 1 to n one time when i becomes 2 it goes from 1 to n once and then it goes from 1 to n once again so two times right so basically this is n times and this is n times so in total it ran two times so twice it went from one to n so i guess that's the pattern that we can find if it's um running n times let's say then it's gonna go from one to n n times so essentially like it's here so if it was two it was going it was running n times twice right so if it's n here it's going to run n times n times it's kind of confusing um but so how many times is this going to run here is n plus n plus n how many number of times it's going to be n times this is again the math um, series um, which comes to n square essentially um, why that is is because let's say you have two and you add two two times the result is going to be two squared um, if you add three three times the result is three squared if you add four four times it is four squared so if you add n n times and it becomes n squared so well that is why the order of the series is n square this one so less than equal to n less than equal to n the order is n squared now we know why it's n squared um next we can also look at um like here we know it's less than equal to n but if we do it less than equal to i the order is still going to be n squared and we can see why now again we can like do the i and j thingy so i and j when i is one j is one when i is 2 it goes to less than equal to 2 so it's 1 and 2 if it's 3 it goes to 1 2 and 3 
and if it's n, it goes to 1, 2, 3, and n times. So basically how many times it's running is 1 plus 2 plus 3 and up to n. Now this is just um, sum of square, sum of first n natural numbers and again it's a math series and that the result is n n plus 1 over 2. Now which becomes n squared essentially if you ignore all the constants and dominant terms. So that's why the order is n square for this as well. Not all um, nested loops have the order of n square like the time complexity is not n square for all the loops you gotta check um, for every different loop like let's just gonna check this one here less than 5 and then let's say j goes from 1 to n whatever sequence in there so this here runs not five but four times because it's less than five and this is going to run n times right so it's n plus n plus n plus n which is 4n so the order here is 4n which is essentially n so like but this is a nested loop here right so not all nested loops have order of n squared you gotta check individually for all of them